So up here in the upper left, I have D galactose drawn, you know, in the Fisher projection. Also over here, you know, in the zigzag, is also D galactose. And what I'd like to show in this video is how you can do the transformation from the zigzag conformation to the fissure. So, first note, this is, I've numbered the carbons, so this is the carbonyl carbon here, and that's the one carbon, two carbon, and then all the way down to the six. So this here is the one carbon, you have the two carbon, three, four, five, and then the six carbon. Okay, now below I have the ball and stick model and I have it in the zigzag for, uh, conformation. And for what's first verified that that's the same as the structure up here above. So, all we want to focus on are the stereo centers. Okay, so that's the two, the three, the four, and the five carbons, which would match here above also the two, three, four, and five. So, at the two carbon, and at the three carbon, the OHs are going behind the plane. And at the four and the five, they're coming out at us. So looking at this model down here, this is the two, and that's the three. And those OHs are going behind the plane. And then at the next two, the four and the five, the OHs are coming out at us. Okay, so so these two here are are, are the same when it comes to their store their their stereo orientation. Now, going for the transformation. So I'm going to start the transformation here and then I have a pre-drawn model that I'm going to actually just throw up. But um, if you have a ball and stick in hand, then what you want to do is I suggest you take and you grab it at the grab it here. You grab it this end up here where the carbonyl group is and you rotate them is such so that anything that's vertical is going behind the plane and horizontal is coming out at you. So here it goes. Okay. So let's see. Uh -huh, there. And then we'll go to the next barn. Let's see how I just kind of rotate those about. And uh, then I go, say, like this. Well, this is going a little, you know, I think I'll stick with this. I was going to call up a pre-drawn one that I had fully rotated, but um, it's going a little faster than I anticipated. Now, what happens is, is, is so here, this is the, the five carbon here, and then the six carbon. And when I rotate that six carbon there, it actually then, it's, um, actually then overlaps with the carbonyl group. Okay, well, I'm going to kind of cheat. You know, a true fissure, this would be completely like this. You know, vertical bonds, you can see, are going behind the plane. Horizontals, they're coming out at you, no matter which way you look at it. But I'm going to cheat, and I'm going to take that bond, if I can find it now. Oh, yeah, here it is. And I'm going to rotate it just a little away from the carbonyl carbon, so that it, we can kind of, you know, so we can still see it. Okay, so there you have it. There's... So here we have the carbonyl carbon. That's the one carbon. This is the two carbon, three carbon. And let me blow this up a little. Okay. And I, I strongly recommend model set in doing this. Um, well, I'm trying to make best with doing this on a, on a computer screen with a th uh, 3D model. Okay, so, so there's the one carbon. There's the two. And so forth. Now let's compare it to this. So here's the Fisher projection up here. And so guys, the Fisher projection, very useful, easy for us to see the stereochemistry, but very deceptive in the sense that this molecule is nothing, this is far from the truth in it being linear. Okay. This thing is curled around, bent around with the this carbon here, with the five carbon uh, with the one carbon bent over on this, this six carbon. Okay, so now. Let's take a look, and we see here, then, for the stereochemistry, that being the 2-carbon, okay, the OH is on the right, on the 3-carbon, the OH is on the left, on the 4, it's on the left, and on the 5, it's right. So we have right, left, left, right, which makes that D-galactose. Hope you found this video helpful.